Randy Cavanaugh from the Armory Garage here, and welcome to the very first episode of Pet vs. Print. What is Pet vs. Print? The idea behind this series is to build two identical props, one using 3D printing and the other one using Pepakura. Over the course of the series, I'll show you the difference between the build process, the finishing steps, and what the end results of the two endeavors will be. So, what are we going to make first? Well, in celebration of the new Star Wars, The Force Awakens, coming out this December, I thought maybe a part from the Stormtrooper would be appropriate. I've chosen to use the absolutely fantastic model that Rundown put together of the Stormtrooper helmet. Over the course of this series, if you find I'm going too fast over any of the concepts, please leave me a message in the comments and I can revisit those topics in future videos. Alright, let's dive right into it. So in this first video, what I want to go over is how to take a model that's been set up for Pepakura and get it ready to be 3D printed. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the helmet that we're going to be printing out. And what I'm going to do is export it as a 3D model so that we can open it up in our modeling tool. Now I'm going to switch over to our modeling tool and import our 3D model. I'm going to use the default settings. And now I'm going to get it all set up. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to center the pivot so that I can rotate around it from the center. So I'm going to rotate it. There we go. Unfortunately, the model coming out of Pepakura is scaled way too small. So now I'm going to scale it up. Scaling it up to about 22 centimeters across. There we go. Zoom out on the model. Now I'm going to reset the X form. Collapse the stack. Okay, now our model is all ready to go. The first step is going to be to throw a turbo smooth on it. And that's going to smooth it out. But this isn't exactly what we want because it's smoothed everywhere and we want to keep some of the hard edges. So what we're going to do to give it a nice base is we're going to select all the polygons and we're going to auto smooth it. Find somewhere around 30 works pretty good as a starting point. There we go. And then switch over. Now we're just going to click the smoothing groups box and now it uses those smoothing groups as essentially the base point for what should be a hard edge and what should be a soft edge. See there's still some points in there that uh, we'd kind of like to crease, give a harder edge. So the way we do that is go back to the edit poly and we just go edge by edge. Select this loop here and then oh, get that one as well and that one. And you can use this uh, crease value here if you set it to one and that'll make that edge hard. There we go. Now if we pop back over, now 
of that edge it's nice and hard. So you can go through the model and kind of adjust everything you want. But I think this is pretty good for right now. So I'm going to take this model and I'm going to export it out as an STL. Okay, now we're ready to go. So now we're going to switch over to another tool called Mesh Mixer. It's a free download and it's super useful for 3D printing. So we're going to import that STL that we exported. And what we're going to use this tool for is to create a shell inside the mesh so that it's uh, 3D printable. Because right now it's essentially paper thin. So when you go to print it, it um, the slicer just uh, doesn't really know what to do with it. It needs to have that inner shell inside it so it has a thickness to it. And Mesh Mixer has this fantastic tool that if we select all the faces and then edit, offset, it essentially creates this shell inside that gives uh, the mesh a bit of a shell. You can adjust exactly how thick that is or um, how many polygons it is. But that's good for right now. So now we're going to export this model. And then load it back into 3D Studio Max for the last couple steps. I usually select Quick Weld here because U Stress Weld takes forever. So now we have this model. It has this nice lip inside it. It's got that thickness. And now it should be good to go for a slicing. Okay, now before we do anything else, we're going to want to get our sizing figured out. It really blows to build uh, a helmet or any kind of piece and then find out it's either too big or too small and you've wasted all that time. So essentially what we want to do is figure out how big our head is. And it's really easy to do. All you need is a ruler and two objects to put your head between. Um, be a book and say a box. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what to do. Okay, so it's super easy. Take your ruler, you place it down. Take your book, you put it at the start of the ruler. Take your box, put it at the other side, and then stick your head in between. I want to squish your ears. And then, there you go. Measure the distance between, and you have your head size. And now you're ready to go. Okay, now let's pop back over to 3D Studio Max and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is adjust the size of our helmet uh, to match up with what the measurements are that we took. And the way I like to do this is I'm going to switch to the bottom view here so I can see the bottom of the helmet. And I'm going to make a plane. And I'm going to create it across the widest part of the helmet. So right here, and I'm going to set the width to be the measurement that we took when we measured our head. And that was, for me, uh, 160 millimeters. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that helmet and I'm going to scale it up until the opening matches just about the size of the plane, about as close as I can get that. 
there. That looks pretty good. And that is scaled to 106%. So what we're going to want to do is match up our Pepakura helmet as well, uh, since I'll be building both of those. And so what I do is I'm going to pop over to Armorsmith. Uh, this is a tool I created that um, is kind of my preferred tool to use when I'm working with Pep. And I'm going to import the Pep file for the Stormtrooper. Okay, and I will adjust the scale on that. Switch to percentage. And I will set it to, let's see. What was there we go, and I will save that. Stormtrooper helmet. There we go, and we're ready to go. We've got a perfectly sized helmet for 3D printing and a perfectly sized helmet for Pepakura. Alright, there we go. We have two perfectly scaled models that we can use for building our helmets. And that's where we'll leave it for this episode. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button, or you can follow me on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash the armored garage. Thanks for watching.